you notice your child start to stammer, of course you're going to be worried and want to know how to help. Whether your child is blissfully unaware or whether he or she is having quite some struggle when they're talking, you'd want to know that you're doing the most helpful and putting into practice the safest advice to prevent this from becoming much more of a problem. We would always say that if you are really worried, please give us a call at the department or your local speech and language therapy team. Often a discussion, some advice, some reassurance can be all that's needed. We might in some cases recommend a referral and an appointment. However, in the meantime, we would really like to share with you some of the most helpful strategies and advice for you to follow and have a think about. Parents often notice that their children do get bumpier or stammer more if they're trying to talk too quickly, particularly if they're in an urgent situation when they want to share something at great speed. And everybody's instinctive response is to encourage them to stop, have a little think about what they want to say and perhaps start again or speak more slowly. And whilst the principle is absolutely true that they will be more fluent if they speak more slowly. Let's bear in mind that some of these children won't even be aware that they are bumpy. It's extremely common for them to not notice at all. Equally, even if they are aware that they're bumpy, they might be in full flow, know exactly what they want to say, and actually, by interrupting them, to stop them and make them start again, we're really not being that helpful. So as an example of that, let's have a little think about how it would be in a parallel situation. Guess I'll be there. Why? Just have a little think about what you're doing. Why? Have a little think about what I'm when doing. you're running up a hill, it's easier if you lean forward and take shorter steps. Just take it a bit more slowly. So if you go back down there and have another go, see how you get on. Are you having a laugh? You want me to go back to the beginning again and come up again? Do you know how much of a struggle this is for me? Seriously. All right. Yeah. Okay. Forget it. I'm just going to go back on my own now. You go and do your run and I'm going to do mine. Forget it. I'm only trying to help. I don't want your help. I just needed you to help. I just, just, I just needed to keep going. All right, I'm off. And I want to divorce. Uh, perhaps a more helpful alternative in that situation. Super smashy that. Well done. Keep going. So rather than risking interrupting your child mid-flow to suggest slightly unwelcome or unhelpful advice like slow down and start again, much better to just simply give them the uninterrupted time to finish what they want to say. It can also be helpful as a sneaky extra tip to slow your own speech rate down, which because we naturally match the speed of whoever we're talking to, will indirectly encourage your child's speech rate to get slower. So if I'm talking to you in a very calm, unhurried way, you're less likely to reply to me as fast as you were previously talking. I nerd we did science in in the afternoon and we were learning about um <clears throat> so we were learning about um how magnets repel and attract. Wow, that sounds complicated. Try to reduce the number of questions you ask your child in particular situations. Direct questions are an important part of communication. However, a question is a demand in that it always requires an answer, a response. 
for children who stammer, asking them lots of questions all at once is a pressure that is then placed on their system and sometimes that can overload their language skills. So we're going to show you a little clip now of what is probably a very, very familiar scenario of a situation where a child is being asked lots of questions, possibly one that's quite familiar to many of you. Hi, Henry, come in, shut the door, get your belt on. Have you had a good day today? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Super. Did you remember to hand that form in that I gave you? You mean for the school trip? That yeah. One? Yeah. Oh, good. Good lad. Well done. Mm -hmm. What did you have for your lunch today? Pizza. Pizza? Oh, nice. And what about for pudding? For pudding. I think you had custard, didn't you? Yeah. Was it, that was on the list? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, how about, was, was Jack there today? Because on Tuesday, his mum his mum told me that he was really quite poorly. Was he at um, school today? No. No, so you didn't see him? No. So who did you play with today then? Um, I played with did Josh. You play, yeah, and what did you do? We played hide and seek. Okay, mm -hmm. good. What do you want for tea? <sighs> so as you can see in that exaggerated clip there, that children find quick fire questions quite difficult. All children find quick fire questions difficult, but children who stammer find them especially hard. They'll often respond by either saying, I don't know, shrugging their shoulders, or saying things like, I can't remember. Which as parents, that can be quite difficult because we genuinely want to know the answers to the questions that we're asking. So let's just spend a bit of time imagining what it would be like in an adult scenario. Hiya. Hi. How'd your day go? Oh, it's okay, but it was long actually. What'd you have for lunch? <sighs> lunch? Um, I can't remember. Oh, flip, it seems so long ago. Did you get the uh, milk from the shop to run out? No, no, I didn't. I completely forgot. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you what, let me just get in. Just forget about my day and have a cup of tea and then we'll talk. Is that all right? Okay. Thank you. So lots and lots of questions when a person has had a really long day or they may have spent a period of time somewhere else and they're returning can be difficult, even for adults, but they are especially difficult for children who stammer. So if we're wanting to reduce our questions, what can we be doing instead? One of the things that we suggest is using lots more comments. Now a comment is different to a question in that a comment doesn't require an answer. So if you was going to ask the question, what, can, what do you want for tea? Instead of saying, what would you like for tea? You could say, hmm, I'm thinking about tea. Instead of saying, please can I have the red pen? You might say, I like the red pen. So there are very, very subtle ways that you can turn a question into a comment. So the child then does not have to respond if they're not feeling that they're able to. It's very much the ball is in their court as to whether they respond or not. So going back to the earlier clip where Henry had come from home from school and he'd got into the car and he had lots of questions being asked of him. One of the things, because this is a situation that does come up quite a lot, obviously, one of the things that we recommend parents do instead to tweak this and turn it around is to tell the child about their day. Hi, Henry. Hi. Okay, darling. Mm-hmm. Want to put your seatbelt on? Yeah, let me just take my bag off first. So can I tell you about my day? Yeah, sure. I've had a really busy day today. So when I dropped you off at school. So by telling the child something about your day or about what you've been doing really does set that scene of calmness and, and also models a little bit about the types of information you're expecting your child to give you in return. They may choose to there and then give you a bit of information or maybe later when they're feeling a little bit more relaxed, you might get the answers to some of those questions that you're after. Shall I tell you about my day? Oh, yes, please. So <clears throat> I had pizza for lunch. Did you? Yeah. <clears throat> and for pudding, I had jam roly poly. 
it was on the menu today. And it, in the morning today, I filled up my, my merit chart. Good lad. <coughs> and good. <coughs> but we did some tests today. Okay. Um, I got... So children who are bumpy with their talking are more likely to struggle when everyone is talking at once and interrupting each other and talking over each other. And they find it really difficult to find the gap or the space in the conversation to say what they want to say. Who recognises this situation which is shown in the video clip? I'm thinking about dinner, guys. Can we have chicken nuggets? Oh, See cheese and tuna panini. Oh, so just some fruit with the bagel. Like Hang on a minute. One at a time, please. Amy, what would you like? Can I have chicken nuggets or cheese and tuna panini, please? And Henry? Can I have cheese toasty, please? Great. We know that children who are bumpy can feel a sense of urgency and extra pressure to finish what they're saying without being interrupted. This can lead to them becoming faster in their speech, which in turn can lead to them becoming more bumpy. So to help prevent this from happening, we encourage families to think about their turn taking when having those everyday conversations. Turn taking in family conversations can help reduce time pressure. It can help things feel a little calmer and give your child a greater chance of being more fluent. So another thing that's really, really helpful that we recommend is for parents to regularly play one-to-one -one with their child. And this is about reducing all background distractions where possible. So saying to your child, we're going we're gonna to play a game and asking the child themselves to choose whatever it is they want, would like to do. And they're very much the decision makers in the game. And even if they're playing a game in a, in a weird and wonderful way that maybe we wouldn't have, have thought of playing, then that's absolutely fine. It's about giving your child your full focus and allowing them to take the lead. It also is really helpful because you can build their confidence by, by catching the things that they're doing well and commenting on it and praising them. Is that your, number, your second one already? Mm -hmm. Good move, George. I helped you. How have you helped me? I wonder if I can get any nearer you to probably mine. probably need to go over here. I think you're right. I just need to make sure I don't move my car too much. Let me see. You can always move on, like do these ones. Mm. Or do that one. Okay, good helping. Wobble, wobble. Great balancing. Genius. And then just the starting of it. <laughs> It's really helpful to spend some time thinking about what situations may be tipping your child into more periods of bumpy talking. Where are the pressure points that you've noticed and what situations are connected to these pressure points? And this is where we're thinking a little bit about the routine of your child. So we know that children have very, very active and busy lives and that's great. But does your child have what you feel is enough downtime and enough relaxation time to readdress that balance? Have you noticed that whether it's a holiday time or whether your child is having to go to school, does that seem to have an impact on their stammer? How about situations where they're particularly unprepared for something? 
so they're thrown in the deep end at something is is that a situation that you've noticed has an impact on their talking it's really about looking to all these different situations and thinking about your child and thinking whether there's anything that you can do to either reduce the demands of their routine or to make their routine more structured and having a bit of a plan to try and help them in these more challenging situations. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle is also key for children who are bumpy with their talking. So a healthy diet, lots of sleep and a good sleep routine, plenty of fresh air and exercise, and screen time, tech time kept to a reasonable amount, depending on the age of your child, and minimal or no screen time just before bed. So this has been an overview of the main strategies, support and advice that we give to parents, families and teachers of children who stammer. In many cases, following these principles can be enough to help move a child through a bumpy phase of stammering. There are some children, however, who require a little bit more specific advice or a more detailed assessment. And in those situations, we invite these children and their families to our fluency consultation clinic, which takes place at our North Ormsby premises. We will give you a little bit more information about this in the upcoming videos. Thank you for listening and we really hope that you found it useful.